Hi, welcome back to the Keto's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can create radius policies that depend on your Entra ID uh, settings for access to your network. The first thing you have to do is you go to your Easy Radius instance and you go to policies. For this to work, you have to be either a network administrator or an owner. So in here, we're just going to create a policy and we're going to call it test policy. And we're going to set the allowed IP addresses. These are the IP addresses that our network devices are coming from. So, uh, I don't know, let's call it 23, 23, 23, 23. And we're gonna add it, and here you would add as many as you need. And each one is gonna create a shared secret that you can get from here, or you can change it, or you can rotate it, and, and so on. Uh, next thing we have to do is add the accepted certificate authorities. So by default, you can just one click connect your EZCA certificate authorities. Um, but if you need to, you can also do your local CA. So if you have an ADCS CA or something like that, you can upload the certificate and let us know if it's a root or not a root. And then, uh, but in this case, I'm lazy. So I'm just going to use the EZCA uh, authority and you, you would select your instance. So if you're using EU, you would select the EU. If you're using the general, general. And if you have your own private one, so in this case, I'm just going to use that one. Um, you would enter it there and then you add the CAs that you want. So I'm going to add my root CA then I'm going to add the issuing CAs that are uh, accepted. So I'm going to add my SSL CA and my Intune SCAP. Uh, you can see it will do the root and so on. And the, one of the cool things is like if you rotate those CAs in EZCA, it will automatically rotate them in Easy Radius. So it kind of like makes it a set and forget type of thing. Next thing is create a certificate for the server. So the server needs a certificate to talk to the devices in EAP TLS, and it has to be trusted by your devices. Um, once again, you can do it with your local CA and you can create the CSR, go sign it and so on. However, with easy CA, we'll automate all that and we'll automatically rotate the certificate. So in here, I'm just going to select my instance and I'm just going to select the CA that, that I want to use. So in this case, I'm just going to use my Intune CA uh, to keep it all under the same CA. I'm going to request that certificate. So now we have created the certificate. You can see it here. You can download the CA certificate or download the certificate if you need it for anything for your MDM setup. And the cool thing is it will automatically now be rotated. So we don't have to care about that certificate again. The next thing we have to do is add our access policy. So uh, you can make it that it, on any certificate issued by those CAs will be trusted and put into the default VLAN and call it a day. So for that, you would just kind of like enter like catch all and, you know, uh, it'll just have that and you can do that and put it at the bottom. I'll talk about that in a second, but let's say we're a school. So we're going to have a teacher's policy and you can enable PAP for password based authentication. We could recommend using certificates because it's more secure, but if you need it for a printer or something like that, we enable that. Uh, you can check OCSP or if not, we'll just check the certificate revocation list and then you can match with Entra ID. So this is where the magic starts. So you can match a certain part of the certificate with Entra ID. So let's say you have in the subject name, you have your Intune device ID. And one of the cool things with Intune device ID is that we can use that ID to also check is, is this device compliant in Intune. So you can check that the device is compliant in, in Intune um, and, and so on. So you can do the check device in Intune. If it's not compliant, it's not going to accept it. And then you can also check group membership. So you could go to your portal.azure.com and go to enter ID and select your group that is like teachers or something like that. Uh, in this case, we're just going to grab the DNS admins one and we're going to copy the object ID and we're going to go back to the radius policy and we're just going to enter that group ID and then we're going to assign it a static VLAN of teachers. And so then we'll add that policy. And then last, we're going to add students. And in this one, we're going to do it user based just so you can see all the different things that you can do. Uh, you probably would use kind of like the same type for all your policies. But in here, we're going to say that it's in the email subject alternate name. So it's going to look for that uh, user, either user ID or user email. And then you can also check that it's part of a group or you can also assign the VLAN based on the certificate field. So you could have it that in the subject name, you have the VLAN name. So then we're going to assign that or you can have it in the subject alternate name 
uh, with a DNS and you might have a prefix. So you might do like VLAN dash and the VLAN name. So then we know to remove the VLAN dash. So then you will add that. And the last thing uh, that I want to talk about is the ordering. So right now it would do the catch all so you wouldn't get to all the other ones. So we have to push that down. So now it will check first if you're a teacher, if you're not a teacher, then it will check if you're a student. And if you're not a student, it will send you to the no VLAN assigned. That's how you set up the access in easy radius. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.